Ghana is at the verge of emergence as an African superpower. Once an African success story molded on gold, oil and cocoa, it used its natural resources to produce strong economic growth in the early years of this century. Ghana met the Millennium Development Goal of halving property rates by 2015 and was held as a model of political stability after peaceful elections. But for the success story of Ghana to be fully understood, it's important to understand a bit of where the modern Ghana we see today came from. Modern day Ghana, which gained independence on March 6, 1957, and Kwame Nkrumah, a nationalist and pan African leader, led the colonies push for independence, believing that Ghana's sovereignty was crucial not only for the Ghanaian people but for all of Africa, saying, Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Indeed, encouraged by Ghana's example, more than 30 other African countries declared their independence within the next decade. In addition, the new government led by Nkrumah swiftly built the groundwork for budgetary independence, launching a slew of economic development initiatives. Years of corruption, inefficiency and military rule stifled progress and achievement. However, by the 1990s, the country's situation had improved and Ghana is now regarded as an example of successful economic recovery and political reform in Africa. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce to you our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship rather than global PT is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and aren't subscribed to our channel, you're missing out. Accra, Ghana's administrative capital, is located on the coast. Accra, which was constructed on the site of many gas settlements, grew into a rich trading herb and now serves as the country's commercial and educational center. Kumasi, another important economic center in Ghana, is located in the country's south-central region. Kumasi, popularly known as the Garden City of West Africa, is the seat of the Asante ruler, a relic of an empire that flourished in the 18th and 19th centuries. Ghana's inhabitants may be classified as belonging to one broad ethnic group within the African family. However, there are other subgroups. At least 75 of these can be distinguished based on their language. Many of them are insignificant, with only 10 being quantitatively significant. An effort has been made at all levels of government and public life to minimize ethnic disparities, a goal that has been aided by the adoption of English as the official language. Almost all of the current peoples are said to have arrived in the country in a series of migrations from the north during the previous 700 to 1000 years, with the Ewe and Ga Adangme, who occupy the country's southeastern region, arriving from the east and southeast. More than half of the population is Christian, around a fifth is Muslim, and a minor percentage of the population practices traditional indigenous religions. But we are not here to talk about religion. We want to get to know Ghana's economic success story. It can just be luck or chance. So let's get right into it. The economy is made up of both private and public businesses. The services sector accounts for almost three fifths of GDP, agriculture for nearly one fifth, and industry for one fourth. Prior to independence, the government's involvement was primarily limited to providing essential amenities such as water, electricity, railroads, roads, and postal services. 
except for agriculture, trade, banking and industry, which were virtually totally in private hands, with foreign interests owning the majority of them. The government set out shortly after independence to expand its economic authority by establishing a huge number of state-owned firms in agriculture and industry. Measures were taken to entice international investors to operate independently or in conjunction with the government in order to compensate for the local shortage of money and entrepreneurial capabilities. Because of poor planning and unethical administration, these initiatives did not produce the expected results. By the time President Kwame Nkrumah's administration was toppled in 1966, the government's massive foreign borrowing had depleted almost all of the country's abroad reserves and resulted in external and domestic debts exceeding $1 billion. New government time and again have attempted to address the negative balance of payments, reduce inflation, restructure overseas loans, boost agricultural productivity, and rationalize industrial development, as well as save precious foreign exchange by encouraging the export of locally created goods. There was a significant reduction in government participation in economic affairs from 1966 and 1972. Despite this, the government maintained to provide basic services and was the single largest employer of workers. Following the coup of 1972, officials reverted to the idea of a centralized economy. Imports were curtailed, industrial projects that had been abandoned following Krumah's collapse were resurrected, and a program of further nationalization and state control was initiated. After a two-year suspension of foreign loans and aid, the government agreed to a repayment schedule for its obligations in 1974. Although political instability resulted in a number of unstable economic decisions, this was completed with a more welcoming approach toward investment by richer countries. Ghana's external debt and trade deficit grew, prompting the devaluation of the city, its national currency, in 1978. Agriculture, forestry and fishing employ more than half of the people in addition to supplying the majority of national income. Cocoa, which is grown commercially for its seeds, cocoa beans, is planted on more than half of Ghana's arable territory and is a major source of export earnings. As a result, the world price of cocoa beans has a direct impact on Ghana's economic fortunes. The Cocoa Marketing Board founded in 1947 to regulate cocoa prices, was decommissioned in 1979 due to corruption allegations, but was resurrected in 1985 as the Ghana Cocoa Board. Farmers' share of world market price had been increased from 25% to 60% by the late 90s, and the additional money provided to farmers spurred production. Ghana is one of the world's top cocoa producers and its sun-dried rather than mechanically dried cocoa is prized for its exceptional quality. Timber has also been a significant source of revenue in terms of foreign exchange. However, limits on cutting and exporting round lugs reduce the importance of timber exports toward the end of the 20th century. Logging permits are limited by the government. Ghana's local market is significant. Food produced for local use has a high monetary value. The land and climate are ideal for a variety of crops. Successive administrations have pushed for food diversification to minimize reliance on a few commodities and lessen the demand for imported goods, but their policies have frequently been inconsistent due to the emphasis on exports that generate foreign cash. Sugar, coffee, palm oil, palm kennels, copra and a variety of fruits and vegetables are among the agricultural items exported, in addition to cocoa beans and timber. Ghana's offshore seas are teeming with fish and the development of Lake Volta has added to the home market's fish supply. 
The majority of the catch is sun-dried or smoked and consumed locally, but the growing amount is refrigerated. Certain fishes, particularly tuna, are primarily targeted for export and canned, and fresh tuna export rose in the late 20th century. Although Ghana offers a diverse range of minerals, only a few are exploited. Gold, diamonds, manganese and bauxite, the primary source of aluminium. The oldest of these extraction businesses is gold mining, which dates back to the 15th century. Ghana has natural gas and oil reserves. The Ghana National Petroleum Corporation GNPC, a state-owned company, is involved in all facets of the country's oil and gas business. The offshore Jubilee field began producing oil in 2010 and Ghana's output increased significantly. The initiation of production at the Twenimboa in Nyenran Tome field in 2016 and the offshore Cape Three Points field in 2017 completed this. The above mentioned fields also produce natural gas. Oil or gas fired power facilities, such as those at Mpone, Tema, and Takoradi, provide about three feet of Ghana's electricity. Many of Ghana's rivers have the necessary flow regimes and rates to allow for hydroelectric power production, which accounts for around two feet of the country's electricity, and is primarily provided by the Akusombo Dam on the Volta River. A second dam, the Mpong, is a few kilometers downstream. Drought conditions, on the other hand, can have a detrimental impact on hydroelectricity output and result in power outages. Since independence, Ghana's government has pursued various industrialization policies, resulting in the establishment of a diverse range of manufacturing industries. These are primarily produced for domestic consumption. The maintenance of a reasonable balance of external trade was one of the program directions of the five-year plan from 1975 to 80 and a number of industrial initiatives were geared at the export markets in the medium or long term. The shortage of money has impeded Ghana's industrial development and national industrial development policy in the early 1980s recognized the significance of recruiting foreign capital for a successful economic takeoff. In the 90s and 2000s, a push to privatize Ghana's power status helped boost output and export in several industries, while also attracting international investment. Gold mining in particular grew significantly as a result of increased efforts to revitalize the industry, which included substantial internal investments and incentives for local and foreign companies. The Taqwa mining area's high-quality sand serves as the foundation for a modest but substantial glass industry. Many financial institutions, including commercial, development and foreign banks, are located in Ghana. The Bank of Ghana is the country's central bank and issues the Ghana Sedi, the country's currency. Elmina Castle, built by the Portuguese in 1482 and Cape Coast, erected by the British in 1965, had the most extensive renovations. As a result of additional tourist and a free market economy, the private hotel business has flourished and the tourist hotels can now be found in practically all major Ghanaian cities. Various taxes, including as the value-added tax, income tax, property tax and other taxes, account for a major portion of government revenue. Certain types of businesses are eligible for tax breaks. The trade union movement played an important part in the war for independence and the government sought to make it a more direct instrument of policy after independence, recognizing the movement's importance as a political force. The Trade Union Congress TUC, which was almost an integral component of the government, was given control over all trade unions in the country, 
restricting workers' ability to bargain with employers and the government. The tax monopoly was abolished after the Nkrumah administration fell and other unions were permitted to function. The southern section of the country has a higher density of roads and railways than the northern part. Only approximately a quarter of the roads in the country are paved. Around 1912, motor transportation was introduced in the towns and it swiftly extended to the cocoa growing areas. Between the bigger towns, there were municipal bus services as well as express coach and freight services. Rail transportation became popular in the early 20th century. The train system connects Sekondi, Takoradi, Kumasi and Accra in a triangle. Within the triangle, there are further lines and branches that connect to other towns, including the mining towns of Takwa and Dunkwa, as well as the port of Tema. Rail transportation is less prevalent than road transportation and is mostly utilized for free transport. Domestic flights are handled by small airports, such as those in Takoradi and Sunyani. The majority of products that enter and leave the country are transported by water. Takoradi opened in 1928 and Tema, both half port, opened in 1961. Passengers are handled by both ports. All these sectors from agriculture to transportation have a synergy which has encapsulated all of Ghana's efforts into a masterpiece that is the modern day Ghanaian economy. And to all those Ghanaians who doubt if their country is truly successful because they are yet to feel the actual implications of economic resurgence on the ground level. Our message is of reassurance. Change is coming. It's already here. And it's not only for you, but for your children and their children after. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do not forget to subscribe and officially become a member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.